welcome to Chi Talk. Uh, this, uh, my name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I used to be an architect many years ago uh, and uh, shifted my career and started to teach energy healing and uh, Qigong, which is based in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, studied for years and uh, sharing it for uh, over two years, over 10 years now. Uh, so uh, this, uh, uh, I usually teach movement class workshop on different topics of Chinese medicine, uh, movement practice, healing energy, and seeing people one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, that's uh, dealing with any chronic health condition, help them heal. And uh, this Chi Talk is just about spreading the words of health and healing and and also having a portal for anybody that wants to ask questions, question personally on, on what they're dealing with or on the specific topic we're, we're talking. But really the reason of this talk is to inspire you. You know, one of my turning point, point of healing my, myself was um, realizing that I have the power to heal myself. I have the power to heal myself. And really, this is the message. And this is the, my podcast name is Awaken the Healer Within. And, um, and, and it uh, seems to be a hard task, but it's really following uh, a very basic guidelines of, of, uh, of how to work with your own energy. And today, I'd like to talk about, uh, about the concept of chi more from a psychological standpoint and take that into how to turn our suffering into blessings. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you uh, for joining me. So let's, uh, let's start with, with a little bit of a, a practice, a little bit of meditation. Since it's a summer, at least in the Northern hemisphere, we're gonna start with the heart. What I want you to do is just put both middle fingers together and tap on the heart center here. I'm just gonna lower my camera a little bit. So the heart center is located on the sternum itself, on the chest bone. Uh, for men is right between the nipple lines, right in the center. For women, it would be between the fourth and fifth intercostal space. It is the heart center. So it's actually the center of the chest bone. So we're knocking on it. Now close your eyes with both middle finger and inhale through the nose into this area that you're tapping on and exhale from the mouth. Long inhalation, inhale from the nose. Make sure the exhalation a little bit longer. Make sure you exhale all the air out. See that usually we exhale only 60% of the air. So 40% is stagnant chi that keeps inside. Let's try to cleanse it all out on the exhalation. Just make it soft and relax exhalation, but fully all the way out. And inhale from the nose. And what happens when you exhale all the way, the inhalation get deeper and more invigorating and that opens the lung chi. The energy of the lungs. Let's move our fingers a little bit up underneath the collarbone, right, right underneath the collarbone, close to the chest, the, uh, the sternum, the chest bone. And this is going to be the point for immunity. It's called elegant mansion. The lung is, in, is considered to be a mansion or a palace. We call it the white palace. The palace is where everybody meets. Yeah, the government is in the palace governing the whole body. So the lung is the governor of chi. So your breath, the quality of your breath determine your energy, your chi, your chi force. Yeah. 
So this is the palace, very important place. The palace is where all, everything meets, all the streets come into the palace, the city center. All right, and let's lower the tapping and let's do tapping with all the fingers, five fingers on the belly. Just lightly kind of flick it. Let's take the three fingers, open the mouth and do it on the jaw. And lightly on the temples with the middle finger. Very lightly. And on the head. Very lightly. Back of the head, and base of the skull, behind the ears, very lightly with all fingers, back to the jaw, throat, and back to the heart. Nice, and then relax the hands down, keep the eyes closed. And just feel where you tapped, feel the brain, the heart, the belly, all this area you tapped on. Notice the quality of your breath. Move your attention to the sensation of breath, wherever it's most obvious in the body or most compelling to you. Just listen to the breath as it comes in naturally, as it goes out naturally without controlling or changing it. As you move your attention into the breath, as it is, without deregulating or controlling it in any way, You might notice tension in the body that you're keeping and see if you can at the same time scan the body and see where you can relax the body. Muscular tension anywhere. When you see, when you scan the body in a certain area, you go with your mind in some area like shoulders. See if you feel the breath in this area as well. So you're not losing the observation of breath as you scan the body. Notice, do I feel the breath there? If I don't feel the breath, what do I feel in this area?
what sensation exists in this area. And slowly let's relax and kind of pause this process and open the eyes. Beautiful. Hey, Dan, good to see you. Dan, join us. <laughs> we have a big group today. So the, the, what I wanted to talk about is about the concept of chi. What is chi and how it relates to life circumstances and how how it relates to our to our ebbs and flow, to our ups and downs, and to and to life, and really what she is, we know that it's life force energy. It's energy, and without that energy, we we won't uh, we won't be alive. But in order to have energy, you have to have you have to have a potential for energy. You know, like in electricity, like a waterfall. If there's going to be a high waterfall, like a big, uh, big change between an elevation, the waterfall would flow uh, stronger. <laughs> there's going to be more energy. So really, the the concept of chi is the the behind it is the idea of of tension. We have to have tension in order to have energy. We have to have uh, changes uh, in you know between here and there, we have to have some tension to create a flow of energy. Without tension, there's no energy. Yeah, and tension from a psychological um, standpoint is, if you think about what tension is, what stress is. Yeah, so we have to also differentiate between stress, good stress and being overstressed. <clears throat> and that's kind of like a very gray zone. And that's that's where a lot of healing happens. Like when, when we are overstressed, when we are cannot, we are we cannot transform the energy. The stress cannot be transformed. It creates over time a blockage in the body. And it's really, it's from any any point, you know, from, from if you look at chemistry, at physics, what, what keeps particle moving is is change in pressure. And you know, things are moving, things are flowing. Whenever there's change in pressure, whenever there's, there's tension between one point and another point, this is what creates flow of energy. And that's always what moves the universe, what moves the world, what spins the world, what grows, what we are growing. <clears throat> and uh, from a psychological standpoint, there's also tension in our life. Like <laughs> attention could be a desire. I want, yeah. So the, the, the really the definition of tension from a psychological point where you are is that you are not pleased with something right here right now you don't accept fully the present moment something you want it to be different you want something to be different about this present moment and that creates tension even wanting to you know what is your desire when you talk about desire I want to be stronger or healthier or wealthier. That creates tension. And the tension, we, we work through that tension through life. So that's, it's good to have tension. Tension is actually the, the reason that we, we, uh, we, we have the energy moving. <laughs> so, um, even a heart desire, like what we say, I want to be, I want to be not right here. I want to be, I want something about this present moment to be different. Something about this present, like and now I feel a little sweaty, so I don't feel very comfortable. That's tension. I already feel a little tension, a little uncomfortable. And uh, so this is on a kind of very uh, immediate level. 
but we can uh, kind of um, explore it also in a bigger a bigger level, like the pandemic or what happened, and how do we deal with with tension? How do we deal with how do we transform stress? How do we go about stress? And this is really what life is about. Life is about there's no, there's always going to be chi flowing. You always you actually want to embrace the struggle you want to embrace the uncertainty you want to this is what we want to do like would you go and watch a movie that uh, in the movie there's the heroes or the participant don't have any struggle or conflict or triumphs <laughs> the energy is going to be very low <laughs> it's not going to be interesting and often the goal is not really interesting it's more about the process of how, how we go about it. Like I remember when I was waiting for my green card, it was a foreign city, and I was really, really looking for the green card. You know, I was being a good employee and shifted, you know, and just, and then when I got the green card, it was okay, I got it, but I wanted it for so much. But when I got it, I was like, okay, now I have it, that's it. It was kind of like, okay. <laughs> and I don't know if you can relate to it, but often when we get what we wanted, you know, you want to be wealthy and all of a sudden, okay, so the universe gives you a few millions of dollars and you have it now. And now what, you know, so, uh, so maybe you can relate to it in some level uh, to, so the, the gaining the, <laughs> so really the, the, the more interesting story, the more the, the juice is really the process and not so much when you achieved what you're looking for and and this is really what what the Tao is telling us and this is what um that's uh what we say embracing embracing the the way embracing the struggle embracing the uncertainty embracing where you are uh and uh we talked about it last week uh and one and, and how to do it you know we get triggered we get triggered we get we get upset or we get uh, tensed up. So so there's all kinds of tools. We kind of like talked about so many tools, but but the first tool that I find the most powerful is to feel it, <laughs> is to feel that energy of tension, to feel it in your body, to move it, to breathe, to change the breath, to to. Sh to shift them, like to look at you from the outside, to look at, oh, look what Ellie is now experiencing. Look at how I'm responding to it. And what do you choose to do? So there's really three parts, acknowledging it, acknowledging it, being mindful of understanding here, here, there's a pandemic, I need to put a mask on or whatever it is and see how you feel emotionally, energetically with it. And then choose you know, and the process of transforming the energy, of embracing the energy is working. First of all, I found very powerful is working with the body, working with the breath, working with the psyche as well. So there's many, many tools working with the psyche. One, one of the most powerful thing for me for the pandemic was <laughs> how, what can I do? to turn this around for me? How can this be a blessing? How can this like, you know, really um, struggle time? Or, you know, I, I kind of had to stop teaching because <laughs> there's no in-person classes. My last connection with my, with my students in person. And uh, I mean, I, I'm sure everybody has their own story about it. And some stories are really difficult to hear even more than mine, I'm sure. <laughs> and, but I ask the question, what would it take to flip this around? What would it take to actually make this a blessing for me? What, where is the growth here? You know, where is the, like now I'm going through a story, through this tunnel and how can I turn it, how can this transform? How can this be a blessing? So um, asking a question is actually an energy healing practice. When you ask a question, your subconscious mind works for the answer. It's very powerful. Like when I ask you, hey, where are you from originally? 
then your mind automatically goes to your birthplace. When I ask you, what would it take to make yourself healthier? Your already subconscious mind already go there. He knows the answer. So if you ask powerful questions that has, you know, like one of the worst questions to ask is why I have pain. <laughs> so the universe will show you also why. And that it's that's not good. <laughs> so you know, you want to uh, <clears throat> so working with the psyche is asking powerful question, working with the noticing your attention, noticing your body, breathing, changing the breath, doing qigong, and and really looking at this story that you're experiencing, like the movie that you went to see that you want to see the conflict and the triumphs and, you know, and look at you and you're like, okay, now this is the movie now. <laughs> and, <clears throat> and really, and really this is how we turn uh, struggles into blessing is to, to embrace them, to accept, to first acknowledge, then to decide what to do and then to change your reaction to them. And that's, and that's really kind of the work, so to speak, of, uh, of, of taking. And, and these practices that we're doing, the Qigong, the breathing, <clears throat> very important for, your, for preventative medicine, because we are unaware a lot of time. What I notice working with people that, <laughs> that we're really unaware of how much tension, emotional tension we hold subconsciously. We're just, we're just unaware of it. I just worked with people that I gave them practices to release stress. They did it daily. And all of a sudden something in their body healed. And you say, oh, wow, that's a miracle. But it's not really. You know, if you're stressed out, you're tensing the body. The body is a reflection of your mind. And then if you undo it, then the body responds too. It just heals. So sometimes it's really simple. Sometimes you need more intervention. But, but um, yeah, so this is uh, like brushing your teeth. One of my Qigong is a grandmaster said that, <clears throat> would you brush? <laughs> he told me, I told him, what do you think? Uh, like how much you should practice Qigong? He told me, well, how often do you, do you brush your teeth to get a good uh, hygiene in your teeth? I, so I told him every day. And I was like, yes, every day. And if, if you brush your teeth once a month, what would happen? It's the same thing. <laughs> so these practices exercising uh doing qigong which is a, a, a beautiful a combining movement and meditation and breathing is a really way to uh to keep yourself healthy um so this is kind of like a little two cents and some example from <laughs> my life about this this subject and how in the mist of strong agitation, of fear, of uncertainty, we can embrace that. And that question is what you need to ask, we need to ask ourselves. How can I, in the midst of all this, embrace it? And, and not only embrace it, grow from it and actually develop into, there's gonna be present and gifts from this. What would it take to have it? Where is it? And look for it and ask for it and it will come. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of my two cents. I wanted to open it because there's a big group here and I want everybody to share their um, experience or even if you have questions about this. Um, Yes, anybody wants to share something or just, yeah, uh, Edward, go ahead. Hi, um, yeah, th this is so powerful. And I cannot this hear should your be voice. Anybody can, can you hear, hear me? You? Edward, you can, can you hear, hear him. Me? Why I cannot hear him. All right. Anybody can hear him? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. So it's something on my end. Yeah, it happened last uh, week too. <laughs> well, that's not good that I cannot hear you. 
Now there's is tension. This, is, this, is this the other <laughs> tension? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, I got it. Okay, let's see. Um, Testing, one, two, three, four. <laughs> let's see. Um, maybe your connection. Yeah, maybe my connection. Audio. But you just heard Dan, right? Because you responded to him. Yes. yes. I figured it out. Can you speak? Can you hear me? Testing yes, one, I two, three, you. four. I hear you. All right. So, uh, you know, what you said reminded me of a great song. Um, uh, I think it was, was it Harry Chapin. Anyway, it was called Taxi. And, uh -huh. and, and the wisdom of the song was it's the going, not the getting there. That's so wonderful. So, uh -huh. you know, I want to be a millionaire, but it's working your way to get there. Um, you know, I want to find a great love. It's working your way to get there. Because after we get what we ask for, next, you know, you're always mm -hmm. looking for something else. So enjoy the moment. Stay in the present. Be happy, you know, with the present. But what you're doing over here, and I'm, you know, I'm taking notes and everything. Ellie, this is a weekend course in person, the heal within. This is probably the most powerful and most important thing because this says it all. If we heal ourselves, if you can tell someone, you know, just get present to the tension in your body, clear it up, and all of a sudden things start healing in your body, what's better than that? You know, I'm waiting for the joint and the bone, you know, uh, you know, to get to do that. Even with your good night Qigong, I, you know, eight and a half hours last night. I'm doing eight to 10 hours a night, just falling in bed and falling asleep because I'm doing the practice, you know? And it's like moving on to the healer within. And mm -hmm. this is a big program that's so good for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Dan, let's hear you too. I've been a long time. Thank you, Edward, so much. That's powerful. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to put a little tension into this, but one, yeah. of the things I, one of the things, yeah, of course, it's me. But one of the things I also realized uh, last week, actually, is that in my lifetime, I have focused more on the work and the effort than the actual result. So sometimes we forget that this is what we're working towards. You know, it's like we get so caught, I mean, because my indoctrination was, you know, work hard, you know, work hard, work hard, you know, work is good for you. I love work. You know, I mean, that's what I grew up with. So, I mean, I can work and work and work and work. And then all of a sudden I went, oh, wait, there's a result after that. So, you know, I think, I think sometimes it's important to remember that there's a result that you're going towards. You have a goal. Let's do the work. Then we hit that goal. Then it's time for a new goal. But I think, um, I know for me, it's like, I, I forget that I have a goal. I can keep working and working and working, be this little minion down here, work, 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 work. Oh yeah, that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And I actually, that, so the work isn't the tension. It's like realizing that that's what I'm working for. The tension is like, oh, oh, now that, you know, that, that gives you purpose to that tension. And that also, uh, and that also strengthen your appreciation towards yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, when you can achieve something, it's like you go, wow, what's next? Which is exactly what I did last week. So, you know, in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's very important. That's a very important one. Uh, you know, how to not lose sight of the, of where we are going and, uh, and realize that we, we, we achieved it and be grateful and appreciating all the effort that we did because only then we can actually go forward, right? Yeah. That's, that's also something that, um, yeah. Uh, anybody else wants to add something to it? Or Dan, do you have, I think you kind of haven't finished it. <laughs> I have, I actually have finished it. No, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, it's like how big and how big, well, how big do you want to go? I, you know, that's the, yeah. that's the question. What do you want to achieve? Then what's next? It's like, you know, find that place of what you want and find the discomfort in that and then work through that. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, 
yeah, look at look at what it is that, you know, what limitations have you put upon yourself? You know, I mean, that was my own personal limitation without even seeing it. It's like, work hard, work hard, work hard. Man, look at Dan. He's working so hard. Yeah, go, Dan, go, Dan, go, Dan. But then you go, well, Dan, what did you achieve? And it's like, uh, uh, I worked hard, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can put okay. that. But what did you achieve? What, where, where, uh-huh. what, you know, what's the result of that? I mean, I can get a lot of approval working hard. You know, people are going, yeah, look at Dan. Woo, good for him, <laughs> you know. But Dan, did you accomplish the goal you set out to achieve? Mm-hmm. Oh, whoops. Because my goal wasn't, my goal wasn't to work hard. That may be the process, but my goal was to achieve this goal. So. Hmm. Nice. I like that. That's yeah. a, that's kind of another layer on it. And, you know, and, and, and uh, exactly. And that's, that's connecting us into, into different emotions, you know, the way to embrace where you are as a, as a, as a game, as a challenge, as a, as something that we're, uh, as, as a play. And sometimes uh, it's hard. It's very hard. People that are dealing with consistent issues or um, ailments or chronic condition, uh, it's very hard to get out of it and to not be, uh, you know, uh, frustrated, depressed, you know, all the organs starting to kick in when you are in this loop and, and how to get out of this uh, situation, you know, how to get out of this situation. And what I offer here is to see, to see this tension, to see this chi, to see this potential, potential of energy, potential of release, when you release the blockage, the, the energy start to flow. And sometimes it's this big ball that accumulates. <laughs> and how can you release it? How can you release it through this, this theory um, that you know we just talked about? So I'm just kind of going into uh, maybe a different subject, but it's it's really all very similar. It's it's talking about about tension and and again an over tension over stress this is where we don't want to be this is where things get accumulated this is not we're not being uh, so good in releasing energy and working with the mind working with the body all doing all this work is very important and stepping out of our way stepping out of uh, how we do things usually and sometimes it's scary. <laughs> So I discovered that a lot of times the people that deal with chronic condition, they're very scared to move out of their comfort zone to do something that is outside their comfort zone. It's very scary to, to, uh, to, do, to go to the uncomfortable, to embrace the difficulty, to embrace that life challenge and to really kind of like go through it um that makes sense Mm -hmm. yes edward so what i really got out of what you were just saying is that humans are great staying stuck (laughs) in a belief system yeah and by just going 180 degrees in the other direction i can do that i can heal that instead of saying i can't heal that I, i got this disease you know i'm stuck you know, and people are very good in the negative. Right. It's about accessing the positive within us. And if I can share a quick story, and I can heal myself. I've learned, you know, the stories and a lot of things. And all of a sudden, about a month ago, I started with dry mouth, waking up in the middle of the night with dry mouth. Until, and it took me a week until I said, wait a second, I don't have that. I'm not going to do that. And I sat down and I closed my eyes and I started creating saliva. That's what I do now. And I swear to God, it's gone. (laughs) You know, and it's just by saying it positively. And if you don't believe it, just say it positively, accent the positive and heal it. You know, you've seen people that in front of you, they cured from cancer or Parkinson's, whatever you've done with people. It's amazing. 
it's like start out start out it's like putting on something that's a little bit uncomfortable and you know the only thing i can think of right now is like leather because if you put on leather it doesn't always fit quite right but as you as you keep wearing it and wearing it it becomes more and more comfortable it's like oh wow this is really this is really cool and you keep going and you keep going pretty soon you go wow this is the best thing ever you know it's like as you get more comfortable with you know yeah or even in believing it's like i don't really believe mm-hmm. it's going to work but i'm going to fake it till i make it and as uh, somewhere along the line you keep growing in yeah. confidence in your skill and you keep growing that energy you keep growing it and you know i mean really where is the limit yeah <laughs> And yes. Ellie, you're good with good night qigong and fake the yawn, fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peter, yes. Hey, I just want to make, hi all, I just want to make three really quick comments, really quick. First of all, thank you for talking about um, turning tension into blessing. Um, I think the person who has taught me this the most is Ram Das, and I think everybody knows Everybody here probably knew who he was. May his memory be a blessing and peace be unto him. Um, He, he, I don't know if he used these words, but he said, you know, when he had his stroke, his very, very debilitating stroke, he said that he, he totally saw it as a blessing. And uh, that really changed his life. Um, You know, I mean, for, in a positive way. Uh, The second thing that I want to say is, based on also I think your name is Edward but your name is Baxter on the screen so it's always a little bit confusing my um, puppy. Um, <laughs> um, you know I, when I was studying a lot of spiritual psychology and you know Jungian um, they talk a lot about growing edges and you're you're Ellie you're talking a lot about growing edges and I never found a really good definition. This goes to what Dan is saying too, I think, or what Dan has said. One of the best definitions I found about growing edges is um, to try to figure out in your mind where your fear is. Is your fear uh, of failure or is your fear of success? And I thought that was extremely profound definition because, and, and Edward, you also said something, I think if I heard you right, humans, and maybe Ellie said it, we tend to, it's easier to be in the negative. Um, and and I, think, I think that's where one of the definitions of a growing edge is the fear of failure is that sometimes we don't know how to, I'm sorry, fear of success. We all know how to fail. And I think I should, I should speak for myself. Sometimes failure is more comfortable. So therefore, so therefore, we have a fear of success. And that's a blockage. That's a psychoanalytical blockage where we don't even want to succeed because we don't know what that feels like. Um, so I, I, I love this, you know, the, the whole blessing and, and thinking about our own growing edges and what Dan had said about, um, you know, I think, I think we're taught a lot in Eastern philosophy not to focus on the fruits and benefits of our labor. But I think what Dan had said is maybe that helps us keep going if we, if we think about, you know, the end point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm an educator and we were always taught that, you know, education is not a means to an end. And I agree with that, you know, education is lifelong, but I, I think Dan is, is onto something when, if you don't realize your goals or celebrate your goals, then you might end up just being that hamster in the wheel. And I think mm-hmm. that Dan, that's what I that's what I heard you say. Um, yeah. Definitely. I mean, if you, if, I mean, why, why would you keep going if you don't celebrate, mm-hmm. you know? And I think, I think the other piece that, you, that sparked Peter, what you were saying is like, you know, celebrate the wins, but don't let your ego get caught up in it. You know, when people are resting on their laurels, it's like they're resting on past things and it's like, no, okay. That was yesterday. 
you know what did you what are you doing today what's new you know yeah you know i i gotta repeat this again my mother would and this was your prologue for today's uh what you're going to be doing mm -hmm. and it, my mother would wake me every morning stretch reach it's a beautiful day and my life i've lived a, a beautiful day and she would say to me edward the words are in the songs and Carly Simon came out with a song called I Haven't Got Time for the Pain. And that's been my mantra my whole life. To go to the failure, to go to the negative, to go to a sickness, or I don't have time for that. <laughs> you know, when a doctor told me, oh, you have the gout, I said to him, I don't have that. And I was hiking three hours later, I was done. I, 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 that's it, you know? And it's your word creating your world. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. so none of us should have any time for the negative, any time for the pain. And, and it takes three weeks to make or break a habit and getting in that habit, you know, and jumping out of bed every day for 77 years is wonderful. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know you. You that, that, that time lapse, you know, every day for 77 years, watching Peter or watching that jumping out of bed. <laughs> 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 Edward, you're so good in the punchlines, you know, you just, it's almost like, yeah, we have to end it here, you know? <laughs> All right, let's, let's do a little closing meditation. We kind of like over time a little bit, but it's okay. It's, it's been fun and productive. Let's close our eyes and connect into the heart center. And just uh, kind of visualize the sun in the heart. Uh, the heart is the fire element, the active organ in the summer. And let, if you will, bring your hands into the heart. The breath would be in from the nose and out through the nose. That's a tonifying breath. As we look into the heart, we connect with it like our own child. Yeah, so a few uh, words on the heart in Chinese medicine. The heart is the, we call it the emperor of the whole body. It is the ruler. Sometimes we call it the supreme commander. And listening to the heart is a practice of self-healing, listening to the physical heart, to the heartbeat, and listening to the emotional heart and the spiritual heart. The pure energy of the heart is joy and love. And that's the sun in the heart. And sometimes there's clouds, but we always know that there's the sun behind the clouds. And we keep looking into the sun, even when we see the clouds, yeah, you keep smiling into this kid. Yeah, we all know how it feels to be joyful and playful. And if we look into the heart in that way, the clouds are going to eventually disappear. Because our energy, our energy follows our attention. A smile to your heart. Beautiful. And see this rays of sun shining to all the body. Yeah, sending rays of sun to areas that needs healing. That areas that needs uh, enlightenment. Yes, is the sun. The fire is has two energies. One is light, and the other one is warmth. Fire has light, it like a candle, you turn it on to see something. There's light and then warmth, heat. The temperature, the heat connect to love and the light connect to wisdom. So that's the two elements of our heart. And 
Nice, let's open the hands to the side, open the eyes, beautiful, a little short little heart meditation. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Welcome, Dan, again, it's good to see you after a long break. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next week. We have the good night Qigong tomorrow, if you'd like to join. It's a really fun class and we massage our feet too, Dan. You remember? Yes, yes I do remember. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great day and take this heart meditation to the rest of your day. Bye. See you.